Uh, can you imagine New Year's Day, Couch, Quilt and Dracula? Graham now with some strong language and later than build. He's got some corkers and some tongue twisters. All together now, Dame Judy Dench, Dame Judy Dench, Dame Judy Dench. Nailed it. Hi, right, relax. It's an election for your zone here. The only vote I'm interested in is who's my favourite guest tonight? I'm not telling you. Roll titles, it's you, Judy. <laughs> The good news, the good news is we won't be talking about the election. Yay! Yay! Uh, so the thing is, uh, for you watching at home, we are recording this on Thursday night. So uh, as I speak, we don't actually know what the result will be. <laughs> Exciting, isn't it? <laughs> it's like waiting for your results at the sex clinic. Will it be herpes or chlamydia? We just don't know. <laughs> but we're going to get something. So, uh, Given, given the lateness of the hour, uh, we best not hang about. So let's get some guests on. Uh, later, we'll get into the festive spirit with our favourite crooner, Mr. Michael Bublé, will be joining us. And we'll have a special performance from British rock superstars Coldplay. All of them, they're going to be here. But first, we've got two stars from the new Brit gangster flick, The Gentleman. One is the quintessentially British actor who went global after four weddings, and the other is the cool American dude turned Oscar winner. Please welcome Hugh Grant and Matthew McConaughey! <laughs> stars of the new film version of Cats. One is the powerhouse singer and actress who won an Oscar for her breakout role in Dreamgirls. The other is British acting royalty with an Oscar, 10 BAFTAs, two Golden Globes and a Tony to her name. Please give a warm welcome to Jennifer Hudson and Dame Judi Dench. <laughs> I like Jennifer, thought, but I thought it was all about Judy. It is obviously yeah. all about Judy. <laughs> yeah, all, it's always all about Judy, but yeah, welcome to the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs> but now, if, if anybody... Uh, obviously, you've got drinks and things, but should anyone want to top up, what could be more delicious, ladies and gentlemen, than a refreshing glass of... Where's the title? Here it is. Dame Judy Quench. <laughs> Quench? <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Dame Judy Quench, you have your own beer yeah, now. Yorkshire beer, I think. Is it Yorkshire beer? I think you'll find so. Yes. Have you tasted yourself? No. <laughs> um, you have. But I will. I've got a picture of you drinking oh, no, yourself. Don't. There you are. <laughs> You're loving yourself. I was pretending. Oh, OK. Do you want a little bit? Why not? You know what? Ooh. Oh. Oh. Oh, you're quite frothy, aren't you, Judy? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Went off in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it in a glass. You're a dame. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> it's quite... Yes, that looks quite it's strong. It's healthy. Yeah, do you want a bit? OK. Why not? Shall we pass it a on? Anybody else want yes, some? Yes, please. Oh, Matthew's in. Oh, he wants a bit of Judy. <laughs> All right, bit of Judy for Matthew there. Judy. <laughs> there you go. Oh, you've got a chaser. Do you like it? Yeah. Do, do you like bourbon? Quite good. What? Do you like bourbon? Bourbon? Yes. No. You don't. <laughs> then I'll just cheers you with it. Any more for any more? Yeah, yeah, I'll have one. OK, <laughs> lovely, lovely, OK. You're going down really well, yeah, Judy. It's good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the jokes just write themselves. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. My Julian Clary has come to the <laughs> <laughs> 
It's not bad. It's not right. bad. Not Orange bad. Head. I'm not yes. sure putting that on the poster, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> Judy Quench, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, Jennifer Hudson's here. You're an Oscar winner, working with Dame Judi Dench, Sarandra Lloyd Webber, all of this. And yet, I heard you on Carpool Karaoke mm. talking about that uh, you worked in Burger King, mm -hmm. but you would sing in Burger King. Yeah. But, like, what would you sing? Um... Just any old song, or...? May I take your water? <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to Burger King. Yes. <laughs> uh, that was good. They must miss you. <laughs> Of the year. <laughs> Thank you. It was a mic at the drive-thru. Oh, and yeah, I yeah. thought I needed to sing on it. So yes. because you would hear the beep beep when they would pull oh, up. The <clears throat> that was my opportunity right there. <laughs> so I sang them down and took orders. Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, there's a microphone, I'm singing. <laughs> <laughs> and now uh, Matthew McConaughey, are you now Professor Matthew McConaughey? I'm a professor at the University of Texas. You really are, though, aren't you? Yeah. Like, you actually... It's profess. not an honour. Like, you show up and do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Started uh, a class there. What do you profess? I profess. Um, it's called <laughs> script to screen. Um, it's how the, the journey of script takes to get to screen. So they get to see the science behind the magic about how a movie's made. Wow. You see, you've been explaining that for two days on this press junket, and I still don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Which part? Any of it. <laughs> so, like, in one semester, and we did it with the gentleman, our friend, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. The original script, which was 80 pages, we yeah. gave to this class, OK? Yeah, yeah. Then we showed him the next script, which was a month Oh, how it later. develops. How it develops. Oh, OK, I see. Then the yeah, next, yeah, in yeah, chronological yeah, yeah. order, yeah, yeah, then yeah. we showed them the shooting script, then we showed them the first assembly, then they see the final movie, and they go, that's very different than I what see, we I saw know. at the beginning. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? That's another way to skin a cat, another way to make a movie. And I tell you, we know you're good at it because... And this would really terrify you if you were a professor. Uh, you are. Uh, <laughs> there's a website <laughs> called ratemyprofessor.com. <laughs> really How am I doing? So well. <laughs> yeah, really. No, yeah. Five, five, quality five, best class ever. He really knows his stuff. <laughs> uh, you've got to work for him. Great class. Here's another one. Um, amazing professor, but I, I feel he'd be great at acting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and here's another one. This person. Uh, can, can, you, can, you read, can you read that on the... Get your pen and paper ready. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Them. Go back and fail them. Uh, <laughs> very good. Now, uh, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we've got... Uh, these films couldn't be more different. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to start with a much-anticipated big-screen adaptation of Andrew Lloyd Webber's Cats. Uh, it's out on the 20th of December. And before we talk about it, here's an exclusive glimpse of what to expect. Cats, cats, come out tonight. Magical cats, come one, come all. The mystical moon is shining bright. Cats, come to the Jellicle Ball. Come. We're about to begin. Let's dance! Yeah! Tonight, I choose the cat that deserves another life. <laughs> I am quite obviously the best. <laughs> Finally, we can be who we've always dreamed of being. Jennifer and Judy, you're in it, but a great cast. We saw them there. Taylor Swift's in it, Ian McKellen, Rebel Wilson, Idris Elba. And, and uh, you play Old Deuteronomy, and I'm right that, that normally that's been played by a man. Is that in the original? Yes, Br Brian Blessed. Oh, OK. And very but, beautifully. But they didn't need to change it, did they? Well, I suppose it doesn't ch change the idea that this is some old kind of clapped out old cat <laughs> who keeps everyone in order. <laughs> But the thing is that with with the CGI, you know, you're wearing gre green leotard and spots all over you. And I thought I knew the kind of cat I was. I've had cats all my life. Um, but when I saw saw um, saw uh, myself, um, I, I suddenly realised I turned into this this cat I had of my own called Carpet once, who was a huge kind of <laughs> orange bruiser. <laughs> That's what I turned into. And uh, Jennifer Hudson, who are you? 
Grizabella, the glamour cat. Oh, yes. And of course, you get the big number. Yeah. Uh, memory. memory. And I whispered at you back, say, but yeah. when she does memory, how amazing is it that? Is it just cast. Yes. It, it's so, it's just Thank fantastic. You. And I just wonder, in terms of, because the Tom Hooper thing, you sing live. Yes. Is that right? Right. So doing it, because when you see the film, I mean, you're so emotional singing that song. You're just raw and wrecked. Mm -hmm. And yet you are hitting all those beautiful notes. How hard is that? That was challenging, you know, because sometimes uh, I sometimes say, do you want me to cry or you want me to sing? Because I couldn't do both at the same time. So I had to find a balance to be able to sing and give you the song, but bear the emotion too, Yeah, you know, which could be challenging. But you are just a great big sobby mess by the end. I mean, it's just, yeah. yeah it, <laughs> I mean, you do have form, because Dreamgirls, I am telling you, mm -hmm. is another one of those numbers. Mm -hmm. Was that harder than this, or is this harder than that? Well, see, with Dreamgirls, it was pre-recorded. Oh. With Cats, I sang, they say, I sang the song live with the emotion and all, like, 30 times. So every time, it was, it, it was more draining from the tears. Like, singing the song, like, I could do this all over again, but the emotion that drains you, you know? Mm. So but it, it must be an amazing for the rest of you on set to hear Jennifer sing that song. And she, like, weren't you going off to do something? The us, so the, yes. And, and she was, <laughs> I remember her saying, she was like, and darling, you have to go all the way to you the get, Academy Awards. You have to go that, all the way like, to yes. the Academy Awards. <laughs> Don't do that so much. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't, she just didn't, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't save herself in any way. Yeah. Um, but then, in a sort of twist of fate, you could not write this. Uh, 38 years ago, you were cast as Grizabella in the original yeah. show. Yeah. I think we've got a picture. This was you as Grizabella oh, uh, all those years ago. And uh, so tell us, I mean, I think a lot of people know the story, but tell us what happened. Um, I was playing Grizabella and the Gumby Cat, and uh, we went to Pussycat School with Gillian Lynn for months, and then we came up were coming up to the first night, uh, and uh, we were, I think, three weeks or a month away, and I was cat dancing with a lot of cockroaches and Wayne Sleep, <laughs> and I heard a <laughs> gunshot. Anyone who's had this happen will, will know that you hear a gunshot wound bang yeah. go off, and you snap your Achilles tendon, oh. and that's what happened. <clears throat> and then I was going to still play Grizabella, because Trevor said to me, it's all right, she's kind of, she's, it doesn't matter if she's, you know, hobbling and, yeah. and, and is in plaster and everything. <laughs> and so we moved to the new London theatre and I fell off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> and I got up and went and got myself a taxi and went home. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to hospital where you had a, a visitor. There. I did, yes. I did. <laughs> There's Android Webber and he brought you a stuffed cat because he was <laughs> very on point. <laughs> and, wow. now, you, Grant, you knew Angelo Webber when he was even younger than that, didn't you? I knew his mum. Yes. His, his mum taught me the piano uh, for a week, and then I resigned. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a child, I don't know why. Oh, I thought it was an ongoing thing. You just... I wish, I wish uh, I'd be, you know, a great uh, composer of musicals by now. No, <laughs> I, I don't like it. There was something creepy about her place. It did, uh... <laughs> She made me sit on telephone directories. Uh, I was a very tiny <laughs> child. <laughs> but nevertheless, so many of them. I was up near the ceiling. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> down there. Uh, but now in I life... only played piano for a week as well. Is that right? Oh. Yeah. But for a different reason, I had to quit. Um, drugs. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Whatever. 11 years old or 10. I had piano lessons and, and, and I really didn't like them. So, but my mom said, you got to go in the other room and play piano. And the, the problem she told me was that she, <laughs> she would start to hear that, oh, play with both hands in there, Matthew. Because I was only playing with one hand because the other hand I was playing with myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bored I was with piano. So my, uh, my piano career lasted a week as well. Okay. Your, yours wasn't as creepy as that, you, right? <laughs> That was the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but now, in life, I think we agree, we, in life, we are either, I think, dog people or cat people. I think, Judy, you are very much a cat person. Yes, I am a cat person. Yes. Uh, well, yes, and, we, and during the war in York, um, I was brought up with 17 cats and two, two brothers. <laughs> <laughs> 17? Mm. And I've always had a cat until about a year ago. 
Oh, now all bye bye. Ah, oh, that's very, very kind. <laughs> Would yeah. someone not get Judy a kitten for Christmas? No, 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 please don't. <laughs> <laughs> please don't. Um, and then, uh, Jennifer, you've got a hairless one. Mm -hmm. A sphinx. I think we've got a picture of you, and that there it is. That's that's Macavity, the hairless one, and then that's Grizabella on the other side of it. Now, very, very cute. That's hard to love. <laughs> but he's so affectionate and loving. That's why he's to there. Be. I mean, <laughs> don't be aloof if you look like that. He's <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Did you I said get... he's so ugly, he's cute. Did you get them because of the movie? Well, yes. I told Tom Hooper when I was on the set, I said, I'm going to get a cat, name it Macavity, and then I'm going to get another cat and name it Grizabella. And so that's Macavity and Grizabella. Oh, OK. And now, Matthew McConaughey, I would say dog person. I have both. Oh, you've both? You've got many too. dogs and cats. OK. Yes. Like, just roaming around or kind of...? Roaming around. <laughs> <laughs> do they know you're their owner? They do. <laughs> they do. Oh, that's good. <laughs> no, but sometimes it's good with... I, I like both. Sometimes it's nice because cats are so independent. Right. You don't have to do the things with them. And then they come up and they're affectionate and they're just kind of easy. They like their own time. I like my own time. The dogs, you know, need more affection, need more time. Yeah. Yeah. And now, you, Grant, you like cats. Up to a point. Uh, <laughs> on the whole, I adore them. But yeah. I don't like it when they suddenly jump on you, yawn, cato meat in your face, <laughs> then turn around and show you their asshole. Because they love you! I find that objectionable. <laughs> That's love. <laughs> but we did have a cat growing up. It was a very strange situation because it came to possess my mother like an evil spirit. Um, it started with my mum used to do funny voices for all animals. If we passed a sheep, she had a funny voice for a sheep and a pig, etc. And then the cat arrived and she started doing this cat voice, but it really took her over and it was <laughs> a horrible, horrible person. My mother was a lovely woman, church going, Christian, philanthropist, rather proper, and the cat would say, Fucking feed me, you bitch. <laughs> We'd say, Mom, Mom, you, you said that. <laughs> and she'd say, No, darling, I promise you, I have no control over the cat. <laughs> it's a very odd situation. <laughs> well, I, I, I feel like I'm getting to know him so much better. <laughs> <laughs> So that is Cats, and that's out next Friday. But uh, our second film tonight, uh, a very different beast. It's called The Gentleman. It's out on New Year's Day. This is the latest Brit gangster movie from Guy Ritchie. And so, although it is a British film, uh, an American lead in the story, Matthew. So how does that happen? Who, who are you? Why are you here? Mickey, I come <laughs> to uh, England to tell England to the English, basically. Um, a marijuana kingpin, have a multi-million dollar, hundred million dollar business, and I'm trying to retire elegantly, but all the misanthropes around me won't let that happen, so things have to get quite ugly. Yeah, and uh, who are you, you? I'm a, sli <laughs> I'm a slime ball. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a private investigator working for a tabloid newspaper, which, of course, is witty casting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I... <laughs> I couldn't really resist it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us anything about the plot? Because it's one of those plots where it's very twisty-turny, everyone kind of betrays everyone else. It's not really worth it, Graham. It's... It... <laughs> <laughs> it's not stock or snatch, yes. but better, cos we're in it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's on the poster, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, let's watch A Taste of the Gentleman. Here we go. I'm going to tell you a story. Now, I can't be specific about the heroes and zeros, but our protagonist is a hungry animal. I would like you to consider an offer. I am not for sale. Our antagonist explodes on the scene like a millennial firework and has indirectly started a war. If you smell smoke, it's because there's a fire. So you're going to have to stamp that out quickly. His name is Fahak. It was spelled with a P-A, so it sounds like Fahak. Please! Kanda Fahak. Please! It's really warming up now, isn't it? There's only one rule in this jungle. When the lion's hungry, he eats. Whoa! And, um... You, Grant, you've gone full Meryl Streep on this. I mean, it's... it's... We're very similar actors. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it's the most kind of 
transformed I think we've ever seen you, is it? Uh, well, I uh, think I'm an extraordinarily diverse actor anyway. But uh, <laughs> it's true that uh, it's a pretty much 180 degrees from four weddings and a funeral. Yeah. <laughs> and the, vo the voice, is it based on a specific person or...? No, not really. It's just, you know... Uh, estuary, kind of, uh, <laughs> is this creepy? I actually, I, doing the hacked-off campaign, campaign, I got to know some private, really sleazy South London private detectives who worked for News of the World and things like that. And over the years, they've gradually come over to our side. I've got a crazy friend in the campaign who just keeps bringing them to my birthday party. So, there yeah, I'm having a nice birthday party every September. And he says, oh, and I'd like you to meet uh, Glenn. He hacked your phone for a year. And I go, oh, <laughs> hi, Glenn. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, last time we did it, he said, and uh, here is, um, this is uh, Big Ray Knobs. He burgled your flat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, oh, come in, make yourself at home. I think you know where everything is. <laughs> <laughs> but they, anyway, so they're now mates, and I was able to use them a bit for, you know... Research. Yes. Yeah. And, and being kind of amongst all the, the British actors, did you come up with kind of Britishisms? Did you learn phrases you didn't know before, Matthew? Oh, quite, I mean, quite a few. Look, if you're going to work on a, a Guy Ritchie film, he's really sort of defining a new <laughs> vernacular, a whole new language, kind of writing a new Webster's Dictionary almost <laughs> in the film. Um, but there's one, the one that you, Rich, use so eloquently in so many forms <laughs> is the old... Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy Long? The Jeremy Hunt? Jeremy Hunt. Jeremy Hunt. Jer <laughs> Jeremy Hunt, you, you throw it around in just wonderful ways at the beginning of the sentence, middle, afterwards, later, next time, before, <laughs> everywhere. And it's a term of endearment 95% of the time. That's what they tell you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we tell foreigners yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, <laughs> here's the thing. On <laughs> set, Hugh Grant, who was it who knew about the connection between you and Guy Ritchie and your dad's? You're quite cat-like. Yes, well, I'm today. Cat, yeah, cat. Yeah, has. Um, <laughs> we've known this forever, that he, his, his dad and my dad fought together in, in Malaire in the 1950s. And uh, when we did, we did a film before, Man From Uncle, and uh, we had this picture of them standing there looking quite butch with another guy, the third officer in the same regiment, who turned out to be the grandfather of someone else working on The Man From U.N.C.L.E. And we thought it was all so charming, we then recreated the picture. We got the costume department to drop everything they were doing for the film and recreate <laughs> this picture to please so, our parents with. So this is the original. That, that's the original. That's your dad in the middle, right? Yeah. And that's Guy Ritchie's That's John dad. Ritchie, yeah. And then this is the grandfather... Of, the, of one of the production assistants. I've forgotten his name, of course, just Crew. Yeah, and then... <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, the, the crew's grandfather. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and then, and who's he? Nobody. It's he's, Stooge. He's just, yeah, yeah. And then here's the recreation. The rec you really didn't go to a lot of trouble. Uh, there's you as your dad, Guy, uh, the, the person. And, uh, <laughs> and who, we don't know who that, still don't know who that is. No. Another Stooge. <laughs> no, another, <laughs> another Stooge. And does your, your dad still around, so does he remember <laughs> this picture? I thought he would be delighted with it. He, he couldn't have taken less interest, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> But you never know with that. <laughs> you never know what he's going to like. But he likes your work? He sees your work? Yes, he does. And, and uh, he loved Paddington too. Um, <laughs> I took him to the premiere at uh, Leicester Square. He sat uh, chuckling away. Uh, and then halfway through, he turned to me and said, oh, Very good. Is that a real bear? <laughs> I mean, okay, he's 91, but for God's sake, Dad, he's talking, you know. <laughs> no, it's not a real bear. <laughs> and, then, and then when I did the Jeremy Thorpe thing for the BBC... Oh, yes, yeah. Uh, I always go around to see him on Sunday nights, and I went around one Sunday night, and he said, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Isn't your buggers film on tonight? <laughs> I said, no, we don't call it that. It's uh, called a very English scandal. He said, well, I want to watch it. I want to... And he, he said, I've got a television on the top floor. If you could tell me how to turn it on, we'll watch it together. <laughs> so we went up and dusted off this TV and put it on, and I thought, it's not going to be Dad's cup of tea, you know, ex-soldier. And he, he did very well until the scene when I went in with the towel and the <laughs> jar of Vaseline. And, and then he said, I, th I think I might go to bed now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very tired. <laughs> <laughs> very good. And it's time to meet our next guest. Uh, he's a four-time Grammy Award-winning singer with 60 million records sold worldwide. Always a pleasure to welcome Mr. Michael Bublé! <laughs>
Good. Damn good to see you. Uh, How are you? Good to see you. Thank you guys for there you go, sir. Welcoming me so nicely. Uh, lovely to see you. How are you? It's good, thank you. Yeah, nice yes. to see you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again. Yeah, again, because I went to see Michael in concert the yeah. other day. Yeah, I did. Oh. It, it was so good. I saw your film as well, it was very good. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice too, because I could see you. There was a point where I was singing and I looked back and all I saw you, you had, I think, a glass of wine of in one I hand. Of course I did. Yeah. <laughs> and I saw it very clearly, and the other, you were doing this. Hey! <laughs> And you were dancing, I thought, yes, he's into it, he's into it. I was, I loved it, I loved it. <laughs> now, uh, you, you've worked with Jennifer, haven't you? Yes, uh, I was on her special. Yeah. Oh. And we've, we, we've met up at different functions mm -hmm. and things, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And have you met Dame Judy Gentry before? No. We have now. Hi. Yes. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so now, I don't know, does Matthew know that he plays a special part in your life? Uh, no, probably not. Please, I play a special part in your life. Yeah. Can't wait to hear this. Tell us. Well, I mean, I, my wife and I sleep with you almost every night. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> and every night there's a, an app called Calm. And I have insomnia. And he has the most beautiful voice. Mm. And I turn it on and I just hear, well, hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> It's me, Matthew McConaughey. I'm gonna tell you a bedtime story. And I just do this, oh. <laughs> I really do. But when, <laughs> but, but honestly, God, truth about it is my wife, who's from Argentina, she always goes like, you have the man talking again. <laughs> <laughs> the man is talking in the bed again, Mike. <laughs> it's great, though. I love this. It cost me 80 bucks. <laughs> well, it was well worth it. Have you? Really. No, no, we've got a little bit, because I just thought it was you reading stories, but you are actually putting people to bed. This is, this is Matthew McConaughey on the app. But tonight, I hope to send you off to peaceful dreams with that very thing in mind. <laughs> so let your eyes close and your breath fall soft and slow as we begin our story, which just might rekindle that sense of wonder. Oh. <laughs> wake up, wake up. It's hard to keep going. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, the story is actually really interesting about it's a good astrophysicists. Little story, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. very cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, now, of course, it is uh, nearly Christmas time, and look, like, it's like you own Christmas, Michael Bublé. Oh, well, you, thank you. Yeah, because the, uh, the, <laughs> well, no, because your Christmas album it came out was eight, nine years, eight yes. years ago. Yes. Eight years ago. Like I know you don't, you're not interested in these, but like Michael Bublé's Christmas album has been the number one uh, album in Australia every year since it came out. Wow. <laughs> like, that's popular. It's, 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 it's weird, no? Wow. Yeah, yeah, every year, yeah, yeah. Nice, I think yeah. Graham, you know me so well. I, I don't love talking about it. Because I generally like the holiday so much that I never want to feel like I'm pushing something. Well, talking of Christmas, Jennifer Hudson, mm -hmm. you... You love Christmas. Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now you've got a picture here. This is your aforementioned uh, cats and dogs enjoying your tree. Their family photo. Uh, <laughs> still looking at the spawn of the devil over here. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Who's in the back? Yeah. That's Grammy. Because <clears throat> I got three dogs, too. Oh, yeah, Oscar, did. Grammy, and Dreamgirl. So they represent <laughs> that, that era and then the cats. cats. That's clever. Get it? And, but when you decorate your house, uh, I mean, it, it takes days and days. Yeah. The... How, many, how many days? Um, well, it gets done like the week of Thanksgiving, and so the same people who do the O'Hare Airport does my Christmas lights, <laughs> and it literally lights up the whole block, and I get best Christmas lights every year. Do you ever get a plane landing in your garden? <laughs> Maybe next year. <laughs> Don't give me no ideas. Yeah, but, it's a yeah. sled. <laughs> and uh, now, Michael, you were telling me you're not that interested in getting talking about your album. You're not interested in your chart position. The record stuff. company will just love this. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but you, you leave it to other people. Like, even your music videos, you, you're in them, mm -hmm. but then you don't check them. No, I don't want to know the results of anything. I have, like, a rule in my life. If you work with me, if you work for me, I think it's important to have integrity in your work mm -hmm. and do what you do. And, but at the end, once it's done, I can't control if the people like it, love it, what, where it charts, how many things it sells. I don't want to know, because mm -hmm. if it's shitty, well... Mm -hmm. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, they Ignorance sent, is bliss. You but know? didn't they, they sent your, was it your last video they sent, they wanted you to check? 
and you went, oh yeah, the video for the, I had a single called Love You Anymore. And so I went out to the, this beach in Malibu and I shot a beautiful, uh, there was a beautiful model who did it with me. And uh, I didn't want to look at it because I don't look at stuff. And so I came home to my wife and I said, hey babe, can you just look at this and just tell me if, I, if there's places I don't look good or I look fat or whatever, like, you know, and so she looked at it and then, uh, this is true too, this is not making this up. She looked at the video and she looked at me and she said, who is the bitch in the video, Mike? <laughs> You know, you're an actress. My wife's an actress. And she has love scenes all the time with g these good looking guys. And all. I said, I was just on the beach with this girl. This, and I didn't do, I did nothing. Maybe we held hands in the video. And she said, oh, Well, because my, she made you smile, no? <laughs> she said, she made, she made you smile so good because I know your real smile and I know your fake ass red carpet smile. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's a good video. It's a great video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now here's the thing: uh, you're here now, but you're coming back in the summer. Yes. Uh, to do uh, what, so, they're outdoor gigs, but they're not. No, they're in places. They're beautiful places. Well, yeah, I love. Like I, when I came back after I'd been gone for a while and I hiatus, long hiatus. Yeah, yeah. The first show I played was Croke Park, which was this. It's beautiful. Croke Park's beautiful. Outside there was. I don't know how many people, 70,000 people. Was that your people. first gig back, Croke Yeah, it was my first oh, I said wow. to my manager, can you just let me ease back in? <laughs> I was thinking Ronnie Scott's, <laughs> maybe a club, and there were 70,000 people. Uh, wow. But I love the outdoor thing. I think it's really romantic for the people to come and mm -hmm. bring some wine, have a little picnic basket, and you know what I mean? Listen to Have you spent summer here before? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's beautiful. I know, I know. So yeah, that's what I want to do. It's going to be all a these blanket. capsules and all these. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that bad. I'm from Vancouver. No. Oh, yeah, of course, yes. That's Which the same. Yeah, it's yeah. the same. E equally thing. terrible. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, the thing is, so Michael's here now. Michael will be back in the summer. But what? Rainy day in February, you're thinking, mm, I wish I could spend some time with Michael Buble. Well, now there is an opportunity. Because uh, with great celebrity come great honors, uh, particularly a wax figure. Now, Judy, are you a wax what? figure? Yes. You are. <laughs> I, I could have put you out of your misery and told you you are, because we've got a picture. This is... Uh, actually, oh, this no, is good. Oh, don't show it. Oh, it's wow. good. Yeah. Oh, it's wow. better than Daniel looks like a sulky Russian. He doesn't look... <laughs> 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 he doesn't look so good. Now, Matthew, you have one. I'm not sure if your family would recognise you. It's not... <laughs> it's not terrible, but... But it's not great. Okay. Uh, this is, I don't know where this is. <laughs> Okay, it's terrible. What? It's, it's terrible. When and what was that done? <laughs> right, I can do that again. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do I look like? I'm like, I'm gonna go. It looks like a tribute act. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, weirdly, uh, Christmas. Do you know this? Christmas unites waxy you and waxy me. I thought I'd been melted down. Well, I think I've been melted down as well. Oh. But when we both existed, yes. uh, this was Madame Tussauds Nativity. And, uh, uh, just beside Samuel L. Jackson, there's you. <laughs> and look, I oh. uh, I'm loving you. I'm loving you. That, <laughs> <laughs> you're sheep. Who's, uh, <laughs> who's baby Jesus? Uh, I don't know who baby Jesus is, but I like Amen. even your wax figure looks embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks more animated than some of my performances. <laughs> Stop that. Stop that. But now. The latest person to get a waxwork is uh, Michael Bublé. And uh, you haven't seen this, have you? No, I haven't okay. seen it, no. So I'm, it's I'm here. So... It's in the studio. This is so creepy it, for me. Well, it was... Weird but beautiful. It was creepy this afternoon when I saw it, because it is good. It is, is good. it good? It is good. OK. Uh, OK, so uh, Michael Bublé is going to meet his Michael Dublé. <laughs> <laughs> So, Madame Tussauds have brought it here uh, tonight, which is very kind of them, and you're going to say, so look forward, don't, don't look over, so okay. look, look forward, and I'll lead you over here. Okay, I'm not okay. looking. I don't okay. want to ruin it so for myself. So, don't, don't ruin it for yourself, don't okay. ruin it for yourself. Okay. Oh, is he there already? He, yeah, he's here, he's here, he's lurking. Holy he's lurking. God. Does okay. it really look anything like me? It, it does look like it. Okay, here we go, so, here we go. Okay. Michael Bublé, meet Michael Bublé. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Have a look, have a look. Wow. He's there, he's there. Wow. <laughs> Wow. 
He's anatomically correct. Oh, lovely. <laughs> he has no ass. Too. <laughs> is that me? It's weird though, because it's not like looking in a mirror, because it's that's what people see. This is uh wow, those eyes look so much like me. <laughs> yeah. It's like they wanted it to and look like you. <laughs> no, that is, yeah. That is so cool. They creepy. wanted it to look like you much more than the people who made mine wanted it to look like me. <laughs> Come over here. Oh, Michael Bublé! Beautiful! Michael Bublé, Michael Bublé! Wow. It's good, isn't it? It's really good. It's good. Wow. Leave it alone. Okay. Leave it alone. Yes. And right inside for music. For 20 years, this homegrown band has created chart topping hits and become one of the biggest music acts in the world. Here to perform Everyday Life from their new album, it's Coldplay! <laughs> What in the world are we going to do? Look at what everybody's going through. And what kind of world do you want it to be? Am I the future or the history? That is uh, from the album of the same name, Everyday Life. Great record. It is a really good it's record. A great record. It's great. And uh, it's interesting because I was playing it and it's a proper album. Yeah, unlike all our others, yeah. Well, no, but you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not just a collection of songs. They kind of, you've got interesting, quirky things in between. Yeah, and... recipes and. Yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Dance moves. Top tips and Top things. Top tips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And is it this year or next year that's going to be 20 years? Since we uh, got together. Yeah. Next year, since our first album came out. 20 yeah. years. I mean, that's... Hats off. Yeah. 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 Um, and, you know, you're... 20 years ago, I, I think this is your first ever photo shoot, and bear in mind, this is the photograph they approved. <laughs> there were worse pictures <laughs> from this photo shoot. Yeah. There they are. <laughs> um, <laughs> It seems unlikely that they would be global superstars, but yeah. there they are. Like, what's wrong with you? Yes. <laughs> At that time, we were only really eating pasties and um, Mars milk that you get from the service station, you know? Oh, that kind of chocolatey milk. Yeah, and that's all we would eat, and we thought, we're going to look great, there's no, no, no problem. And we didn't really have uh, anyone to tell us what to wear. Well, there wasn't a stylist. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, yeah. <laughs> We paid this guy £8,000 and we never saw him again. <laughs> <laughs> Had to do it Please ourselves. tell me that isn't true. No, it's not true. Okay. And, uh... <laughs> and we look at Coldplay now and you're kind of, you know, gods and you tour the world and everything. And you're sitting beside Hugh Grant. Yeah, Hugh. And I know you're a, a fan. I'm a giant fan of Hugh. Oh, yeah. right, likewise, likewise. You want to see my tattoo? <laughs> Have you got a Hugh Grant? No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> no, but didn't you send him fan mail? I sent him fan mail as a 40-year-old man. So recently? Well, yeah, recently, yeah. <laughs> Not so much since the restraining order, but... Yeah. <laughs> no, it was really nice of you. No, you did, time... I was very flattered. Thank you, but every uh... time I've met Hugh, he's very grumpy. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, whatever, rock star, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then starts flirting with your other half. And, uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> it's like... So So, no, so about two years, it was, about, it was after a very British scandal. Uh, I thought, you know what, I'm going to tell Hugh that I think he's wonderful, because I lo I've loved his work yeah. ever since he started 45 years ago. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, no, but I really have, and um, after British scandal and Paddington too, I, I just thought, I'm, I, I think I just wrote, hey, I'm a, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> It was very nice. It was sweet. It was very, very that's kind. Lovely. And he yeah. replied, and it was very gracious. Oh, that's all good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Should we leave this now? I don't, I don't come out of this too bad. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. I am I'm crap on music. That's why I, I've been... You know, I've just... I, I've only got two records. Uh, one of them's Godspell. And <laughs> the other one is the Band of the Grenadier Guards. <laughs> good that's, album. It's my sex tape. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you have to give him an album. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, well, uh, we're th thrilled that you played for us tonight. It was a gorgeous performance, a lovely song. Thank and, you, uh, Graham. Good luck with the album. Uh, Chris Martin and Coldplay! <laughs> is nearly it, but before we go, uh, just time for a visit to the big red chair. Uh, who's there? Hello! Hi! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's done. No, 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 no. <laughs> Wearing a Christmas jumper. Uh, what's your name? Holly. Holly. No, are you a Christmas baby? Uh, no, I'm a summer baby, actually. A summer baby, and your parents someone with Holly, okay. Uh, 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 where do you live, Holly? Putney. Putney? Yeah. Putney. Holly from Putney. Yeah. And what's your story? Off you go. Um, so it's kind of a two parter. Um, so I was running for the school bus, and I ran into a car and realised that it was actually Hugh Grant driving. <laughs> and then. <laughs> She ran into the car, yeah, not, not the other way around. Sorry. You didn't, you didn't hit her. He was driving a school bus? <laughs> no, he was driving a car. Yeah. I actually said yeah. school bus. Yeah, no, was she was running for the school bus. bus. But it's not a very clear story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then about ten years later, I was walking back from work through Chelsea, and um, I was just playing on my phone as standard, and walked into someone and looked up, and it was Hugh Grant again. And he was there with Hugh Liz Hurley, and I was just like, oh! Oh my God! <laughs> and, so yeah, I'm sorry. I just keep running into you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> there was no story. She's she's bumped into you twice, but you never hurt her. You didn't hit her in a car. You're good. You came out of that story very <laughs> I, well. Could have <laughs> <I'm>, uh, <laughs> gone anywhere. <laughs> you came out of it very well. Should we try one more? Here we go. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hair is fine. Your hair looks fine. You're good. <laughs> uh, uh, what's your name? My name's Lisette. And uh, what do you do, Lisette? Um, I'm a part-time estate agent. A part-time estate agent? Yes, OK. Very part-time. Yeah. Where, whereabouts do you not sell houses? In Dorking. <laughs> Dorking. Lovely. Yeah. So, if you 
part-time house hunting, and she's your woman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, off you go with the story. So, um... I had to take my mother to the optician because she'd um, the arm from her glasses had fallen off. Oh dear! And um, she's she's an attractive elderly French lady, but she doesn't. She's been here for decades, but she doesn't always understand all the nuances and English expressions. Anyway, there we are sitting in the waiting room, and um, there's a bit of a delay, so she's chatting with the lady next to her, who asked her, "Well, what have you come in for?" And my mother said, oh, look, don't worry about me. I, I'm not going to be very long. I've just come for a little screw. <laughs> so, at this point, the door opens and out comes this elderly, white-haired optician. And he's sort of sauntering along in front of us, sort of shuffling along. And the woman starts laughing next to her and leans in and says, oh, I don't think you'll get one here, love. Come <laughs> <laughs> oh, on, you can walk. Yeah, you can walk. Come on. It's nearly Christmas. It's nearly Christmas. You can walk. Well done. Got time for tonight. Uh, if you'd like to have a go in that red show yourself and tell your story, you can contact us via our website at this very address. Uh, please say a huge thank you to all of my guests tonight Chris Martin and Coldplay, <laughs> Michael Bublé, <laughs> Hugh Grant, <laughs> Matthew McConaughey, <laughs> Jennifer Hudson, <laughs> and Dame Judy Dench. <laughs> Join me next week with pop star Robbie Williams, Gavin and Stacey's Ruth Jones, and Rob Brydon. Henry Cavill and from Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker Daisy Ridley and John Boyega I'll see you then good night everybody bye bye <laughs>you're tired from all the non-stop festivities and you just fancy a weekend in Gold Digger is streaming now on iPlayer or if you fancy a weekend at the movies check Ali Plum over on BBC Sounds with his podcast Screen Time and if you're craving more Hugh Grant, and why not, there's a little teaser of what's to come this Boxing Day next.